All right. Hi, folks. Welcome to the Smart Art Business Podcast. My name is Rachel Wilkins. I am delighted today to have our friends from Actual Money joining us. We have Gil and Rodrigo. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you both here. Happy to be here. Thank you. Awesome. So before we do jump in, we are going to talk a lot about uh, financial services, some of the resources that are available to artists who are running a business. Uh, but I would love, if possible, if Rodrigo, if you could just share a little bit of your backstory and how you came into this business. Happy to. Um, I came from a very, very different background. I'm trained as a scientist. I'm a health administrator for research centers, but I'm also an artist. And along the way, I realized that there was a lot of parts to running a business that were not being reflected in the art world. So as I met more and more partners, more relevant uh, people in this industry, I decided to, uh, me and me and some partners decided to create a business that addressed that. And we started with uh, the low hanging fruit. So tax preparation and basic financial services. Amazing. And Gail, what about you? Where where are you hailing from in terms of your experience? Uh, well, my experience really is, is, in, is in banking. Uh, I've been in banking for the, the majority of my career, uh, all 18 years of it. Um, I've worked for some of the big Fortune 500 banks, uh, the, the big ones here in the United States, Bank of America, uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, to name a couple. Um, but I also did some consulting work at PricewaterhouseCoopers, where we went in and did consulting for strategy tech and operations for, for the big banks. And a lot of it was around audit and tax. So it just so happened that I was paralleling this, this whole career path without even realizing it. Then when, uh, when the opportunity presented itself, Rodrigo knocked on the door, I was like, by all, by all means, absolutely. Because essentially what we want to do is just help and arm people with the knowledge that they need to, to be successful and run businesses. I mean, you know, my family is, uh, is a family of entrepreneurs. So if we can start there with our circle and then start branching out and providing the services, that was what really uh, lured me away from, from the, big, the big bank to, to Rodrigo's team. And it is certainly a niche. It's certainly something that the creative community as a whole, not just visual artists, but it's an area where we've really not had a lot of support. There's not been a lot of resources out there for us to learn more strategies, to get kind of to work smarter within our businesses and and obviously not given as much money over to Uncle Sam. Uh, That is an area that you, like you mentioned, uh, is one of those kind of low hanging fruit uh, topics that you really are jumping right into. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, just tax compliance, kind of the business structure that artists should be looking to have in place? Okay, so I'll start it and Gilbert can jump in when relevant, uh, because as you can see, our worlds overlap in numerous places. Uh, So from the creative professional standpoint, to the finance and business uh, aspect of it, which are very similar to other industries, and that's where we come in. an artist is a sole proprietor, a, an independent business. And this is where the conversation always starts. Often they don't realize that the fact that they're trying to sell a good immediately puts them into the category of a business from the point of view of the IRS, um, state governments. And this is also, but this is an opportunity. This is where you can leverage your, uh, your ability to be a business and an entrepreneur um, outside of main industries, outside of, outside of the mainstream. Uh, but in reality, and Gilbert can explain much better than I can, all the same rules apply as a Fortune 500 company. Gilbert? Yeah, definitely. Um, the most important part and thing to realize is that you're trading a good and a service for, for financial gain. And I think once that you, you go into that space and you develop that type, that type of um, transfer of goods, your paradigm should change as well thinking more of an owner and not necessarily an employee. I think a lot of us are, are good hearted and we want what's best for, for everyone around us. And so we're so used to just kind of taking a paycheck that when we actually start to be independent and create art and work and sell that, there is a lot that goes along with that. There's a lot of responsibility, both judiciary and also, you know, kind of a moral compass, so to speak, that you, you kind of adhere to internally. I think it's important to, to really understand that um, that there are benefits to this, you know, to being an owner versus an employee, you know, 1099 W2 provides you a lot of latitude. Yeah. Our our CPA uh, put it, um, put it succinctly and very well said the other day when we were talking about a new client, the moment you start marketing your services, Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you've made any money, but the moment you start putting yourself out there, you are a business and you can start treating all your expenses and your entire life as a business. Wow. 
So for somebody who's listening, who's perhaps, you know, started to sell a couple of pieces here and there, and they haven't got a huge revenue stream coming in just yet. At what point do you suggest that they perhaps form an LLC or uh, an S corporation? Because there are some costs affiliated with doing these things and going through these processes. Is there a certain point where you would recommend folks do this? Probably weeks before they started selling anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our, our plan is always to get ahead of it, ahead of everything. Um, and we understand that that's not always possible. Maybe it starts off as a hobby and maybe it starts off as a passion. Uh, but the reality is the moment you're trying to sell it for financial gain in any shape or form, you're ready to be an, um, an S corp, C corp, um, an LLC. And whether you realize it or not, you're actually a sole proprietor. You don't have to file any paperwork for that. So let's talk about some of the, uh, surprising things that artists can actually claim on their taxes. Uh, you, you folks revealed some, some things to me that I was unaware of. Uh, so share perhaps some of the, the things that perhaps some artists may be overlooking and not necessarily, uh, you know, keeping a track of as they, as they move throughout their business. I think, I think we're, we're always going to end up talking about the haircut. Um, <laughs> I feel like that's, we're always going to circle back to that example. Um, and I had a, I had a conversation with my own preparer about haircuts uh, throughout the year. They don't all qualify, but when they are for the sole purpose of an art event, a photo shoot, something related to your business, then yes, you can claim it for that. Um, if it was something that was done exclusively for your business, and now this applies to everything, then you should run that by your tax preparer, your tax attorney, depending on how large or small you are, uh, but run it by your professionals because you'd be surprised what qualifies. What are some other expenses perhaps related to, because I know a lot of people since COVID or don't have physical studios that, studios that they leave the house for, they're actually bringing their studio into their homes. What are some of the expenses that they may not be considering that they can uh, obviously submit? Hey Gilbert, how did you put it when we were putting together the, the overview? What is art? Yeah, what is art? Uh, I think yeah. answering that question really kind of is the jumpstart to everything. What goes into creating art, your art? Whatever you feel goes into that creation, at some point might be able to be categorized as an expense. Now, if you're bringing your studio into your home, we're talking about square footage. You know, if you're creating art and you're eating a sandwich, well, how much do those ingredients cost to make the sandwich, right? This is, these are expensive. These are things that people, that a lot of us just really don't realize that we can take advantage of. I mean, it can be something as simple as going to the park um, sitting there, people watching, and you purchase something that is going to inspire you to create a great painting or a great sculpture or a new score of some sort. That creative process, whatever expenses are associated with that particular activity, could possibly be written off on your taxes. Could be categorized in a way that you could right. And, the and, it's, off. and it's critical that we don't t give you a yes or no answer there. Like this is this is the blueprint. This is the menu. It depends on what you're creating and what goes into, as Gilbert said, what goes into that creative process. Um, Dell Computer has a very clear manufacture, way to manufacture something. Pieces created in another location, assembled in another location, et cetera, et cetera. What is your process for creating? What are the pieces that went into that? Because it didn't, it's not as simple as manufacturing, otherwise everybody would be an artist or a composer or a filmmaker. There's inspiration, there's research, there's uh, trials and there's things that work and don't work. Um, and all of that has to go in and you have to account for it, but you have to be able to account for it uh, with receipts, with proof, with uh, justification, et cetera. Right. We talked uh, on our, during our last conversation about uh, there even being space to claim the expenses for the research element of creating artwork. And that is not just as simple as perhaps attending a museum or you know, going out to some local art shows, but even for those artists who perhaps use found materials, the time spent or the, uh, the the gas to get to the location where they're going to retrieve such materials is also a possibility. Can you expand on that a little bit? Oh yeah, well, hand in hand with the uh, with the haircut example, I think the deer skin example is going to become, deer hide is gonna be uh, part of our arsenal. Um, it is a very much, it's an out of the box example because not too many people are creating sculptures out of deer hides. So the, the R&D for that is very specific. Mm -hmm. And the person who is creating these sculptures, this artwork, 
it doesn't matter if it's successful or not. There is time, effort, expenses associated with it that they would not otherwise participate in. They would not otherwise use their their, their financial, I'm sorry, their capital to um, to go out into the woods to bring along the deer hides to find the deer to set them up and in, uh, in interesting motifs. I mean, whatever the art is, I haven't seen it, but it is a great example of something that this, an individual would usually not undertake and now has become part of their creative process. So yes, that everything associated with that is an expense. And we're talking down to the hiking boots that you put on your feet and the socks you wear to go up the mountain to get these. Uh, yes. Here's, yes, yes. But we always have to be clear that the whatever they purchase to for this process is not used in some other instance. It's not the hiking boots that they're going to watch TV in. Right. <laughs> which would be kind of strange but that's all right <laughs> so you talk about um weaving the business from the personal uh expand on that a little bit how how can how can one kind of separate that especially in these conditions where we are most of us as entrepreneurs sitting in our home property running businesses i think I gilbert think, wants to talk. yeah i think it's important to understand that now that you're thinking like an owner and not an employee it's important to not have your funds commingle right? You've got your personal expenses and your business expenses. And for ease of reporting and for ease of accounting, having those separate really help you stay organized when come year end, we need to make these, you know, present this data to your accountant, hopefully us, um, so that we can make sense of, of what's going on. But really, it helps you stay organized in the event that down the road, you want to obtain financing, you want to obtain grants, you want um, some additional investors, what have you. Um, you're organized and things are separate. There's not a lot of obfuscation or confusion of what's going on. Uh, I went to Starbucks today, but I don't know if it was for business or that. Like, you know what? Let's just let's just move it aside and get you a business checking account or a credit card or what have you for just for the business so that when a business expense comes up, you have it on your card and you get a statement. And that keeps that separate. I think so often, you know, we're, we're kind of uh, shooting from the hip and you know some of us are, are struggling here in the art world you know the starving artists uh, cliche but really it's the truth right like hey i've got a couple bucks i gotta buy something here i gotta buy something there i don't have the time to do this for us it's important to understand that when you take a little bit of time up front you save a lot of time in the, in, in the back end and a lot of money as well and it's just uh, the strength around developing organization skills around your business right? yeah and that's not to say that we can't untangle it later on i mean you have plenty of clients that will hand you a box of receipts and say, hey, I don't know what's in here. A um, shoebox, a shoebox. Yeah. Um, but that, it, it's a lot less effort on our part. And I mean, don't get me wrong, we're happy to bill you for the hours, but uh, you know, it's a lot easier for you if you just separate them out early on. And that's not to say that, they, that once you have a business credit card and you accidentally put a personal expense on it that, that, you're, you know, that you've shot yourself in the foot, not at all. I mean, all that, every, everything comes down to the notes that you put in your ledger which is really just your record of, of finances. So and if it went in the wrong ledger, you just write a note that it goes somewhere else. And it also reinforces the paradigm, right? The mindset of being a business owner, right? Mm -hmm. it, re it reinforces that, hey, you know what? This is business and this is pleasure, right? It, it, it's amazing what happens to your actions when you have that designation. You know, for people in the corporate world, they have a corporate card and they're like, hey, I, 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 this is a business expense guy, stop, stop, stop. I have to pay for this. You know, that you start to think that way and you start to realize there are a lot of benefits to that when it comes to lowering your taxable income coming your end. Can you offer any tips for record keeping and keep staying accountable and any particular software or systems that you use? Whatever works. Keep it simple. Um, we say, you know, there's so much technology available to us a big thing that we have right here is our phones. You know, you can take photos and create a little file in your in your uh, phone that says, hey, you know, take a photo of a receipt. And then later on, you know, you can upload those, what have you. But use what's available to you. I, I, I like to say keep it simple. But I know there are tons of applications that are out there. I know Concur is one. QuickBooks is another. Um, they have mobile applications that help. You take a photo and it actually helps you designate it and categorize it right there on the spot. And then it just goes into your into your file. And come year end, you give that information to your accountant and they'll be able to pull that down and just ease of use. It's, it's really fast. Let's also not discount the shoebox full of receipts. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? Those are fun. Yeah. So for somebody who may be brand new into this, you know, the business world, perhaps they're a hobbyist transitioning into, you know, 
building revenue. Can you explain the the difference between federal and state and why it's really important to uh, be covering all bases? Well, I'll, I'll say one thing and then I'll hand it over to Gilbert. Uh, it's important because our clients are from all over the country and in some cases outside of the country, you'd have to know all the legal legalities associated with your particular state. Every state does something a little bit differently. The federal is the same for everyone, but the states interact with federal in slightly different ways. And that's not knowledge that most people have. Gilbert. Right. Thank you. Um, in, in, in this regard, it, to say this as crudely as possible, you know, states and the federal government need to get their hands, their palms greased. And so they're all trying to tax something at some point. Mm -hmm. Understanding what those are help you devise a creative plan to minimize your exposure to them, right? I'm trying to say this as strategic as possible. Um, but really the, the difference between state is you're operating in the state, you're selling in the state, you have to pay state taxes. On the other end of it, the federal, it all rolls up come year end, your income you know, has to be reported to the federal government and that there's a specific tax for, tax for that as well. So it really depends on what state you're in on what those rules and regulations are. But I tell everybody, you know, knowledge is power. And the more you know about the regulations in your state, the, the more equipped you are to understand what wiggle room you have and what latitude you have to make decisions. Also, if you're selling um, your art in, you know, across interstate lines, internationally, like there are some, some things that could possibly trip you up. Um, and there are some an, a added benefit to it as well. You just have to understand what those parameters are. And it sounds scary. I'm using the, the, the big words only because it's my background, but really it's just, just know what you know, get good at it. If you don't want to, you know, go down that path, that's why Rodrigo and I are here as well. Yeah, and we're actually dealing with one particular case right now that involves an LLC, no, two LLCs, a, a nonprofit, one of them is based out of England, and, you know, it's, it's their sponsorship. Mm. It's all above board, but you have to solve the puzzle. There's multiple yeah. ways to solve this. So um, what's going to be the best fit? And then on a smaller scale, of course, um, you always have it, you, you always have different ways of addressing whatever your own tax burden is, whatever your financial structure is. So the more information you give someone like us, the more we can do with it. Um, right. It's a, another client didn't know at what point they moved from one state to another. Hmm. Not, I mean, you, not necessarily the most pertinent information in your day-to-day -day existence, but it is important when we're trying to figure out how much art you sold in one state versus another state and how much each state needs to, yeah, how much their problems need to get greased because they, right. whether it's your day job or your art, um, if you've lived in two states, you have to pay the difference in tax in one state versus another. What about if somebody's perhaps taking their artwork down to say Art Basel during December, they're in Miami, they're selling their artwork, they sell out their, their entire booth and th then they come back to New York. Are they on the hook for sales tax in Florida? No. Con consult your attorney. No. <laughs> no, <laughs> consult your accountant. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean, the answer is no. I, I, was, I was trying to shamelessly plug there, but really it's, 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 it's just understanding, you know, how you're selling it and is it under consignment? Like there, there's certain ways, again, there's certain ways right. that we could advise that would say, hey, look, if you do it this way, you minimize. If you do it that way, hey, you know, you're on the hook. But the state yeah. of Florida is very unique in that there's, it's, it's a safe, it's a safe tax state. The wild a lot of things, yeah. a lot of things happen in South Florida. Just let me tell you. <laughs> so I, I, there are ways I do, around it. I do remember pre-pandemic, I was at Art Basel with a partner that they, uh, with a business partner and we were, we were selling art and we had, I don't know how many versions of the tax code in front of us. So that in case, all right, in case we sold to Sweden, in case we sold to England, in case we were selling in New York because we did have to pay taxes because the entity was registered in New York in Florida. No, but everywhere else, zero taxes yeah. in the United States. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I imagine that, you know, especially now with, with online selling platforms and you know, a variety of different virtual events as well, there's a lot to consider. So it is perhaps a conversation that they can bring to you. We are going to talk about how folks can work with, uh, with your organization in a little while, but it is important to seek out advice because I imagine no case is identical. Correct. 100% true. And as you consult with, with your accountant more, the, the more you develop that relationship, you're gonna, there's gonna be knowledge transfer, right? You're gonna learn this stuff. Before you know it, you're just gonna, everything's gonna be so streamlined that you just have to make a phone call, hey, I'm ready to go. And then we take care of everything and it's, you know, it's no more than 25 minute phone call. Right. Talk to us about Schedule C. Okay, Schedule C is the bread and butter of the sole proprietor. This is where 
you are going to report the expenses that become deductions from your overall income associated with the business that made you a sole proprietor. In this case, visual arts, uh, music, uh, film, any, any sort of creative industry, which is what we like to specialize in. But in reality, we've kind of branched out to anybody who's just an independent contractor. It's a lot of the same rules. Anything that goes into creating whatever you create or providing the service that you provide will get reported in the Schedule C, which has a long list of places to report to the Gilbert. Um, you, hit, you hit the nail on the head, Rodrigo. This is the bread and butter. This is the lifeline of, uh, of your taxes as a sole proprietor as a small business. You know, Schedule C is going to help you understand the, the, the inflows and outflows and the expenses of your organization. Understanding your schedule uh, helps you better prepare for minimizing your exposure come year right. end. Right, because as, if you keep these things in your head, um, meals, transportation, uniforms, I mean, stuff that you don't necessarily think apply to you, they actually do. And then you can, you can proceed the whole year, as Gilbert always says, with the mind of an entrepreneur, with the mind of a CEO. Um, you'll see every expense a little bit differently. And then, you know, do you pull out the business card or do you put out the personal card? Right. And it's, 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 it's funny in that, you know, something so small as someone asking about your business, Hey, how's everything going, you know, with, uh, with your artwork. And then you start talking about it, you know, talking about your business to somebody that's asking questions about it. So that's advertising and marketing right there. So that could be mm -hmm. considered a business expense. You know, it's something as simple as that because word of mouth is what spreads the fastest good or bad, well, bad faster than good, but nonetheless, um, good or bad, but that's really what, what it is, you know, and understanding that and thinking like that at the end, and you see that schedule C, you're like, oh, wait a minute. I remember these guys. Okay. Or I remember this, you know what, is that a goodwill? What did I get from goodwill? Oh, you know, oh, that's right. I needed this. And you just start thinking like that. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh man, I'm, I'm actually doing this. I'm running a business here. I'm not just making yeah. art. Like I'm, I'm making, oh, I'm, I mean, I'm go back to the, moves. yeah, exactly. Go back to the example of the uh, deer hides. Um, once you start looking through a Schedule C and see all the different categories um, and you realize that, oh, these apply to you, it's just they didn't have a deer hide in mind whenever they created these categories. Uh, but if you start thinking like an entrepreneur and saying, all right, where does this fit? I know that this was an expense associated with my business. Here are the you know 50 some odd categories where it could potentially go. I'm going to put it there. I'm going to put it there. And then you run it by your preparer and say, double check, make sure everything's above board. Good. And Or they'll tell you, no, because I, I learned this one. Um, I bought a suit for an event. That I, and it's a pandemic, so I'm not going anywhere. I'm not going to work, but I bought a suit for an event. That's a uniform. Oh, okay. That is not fashion. That's a uniform. <laughs> wow. What are some of the biggest pitfalls that you're seeing folks uh, essentially, I guess, miss out on? What are, where are the holes that, you know, when people come to you that are kind of the most obvious that people are missing? I'm going to jump in real quick. And, and yeah, something. go for it. Um, I think it's, it's, it's open an honest conversation with your accountant. Talking about the ins and outs with us allow us to help you uncover the opportunities because you don't know what you don't know. So if you don't share that with us, then we don't, if you just say, hey, here's my stuff, then we call you back later and then we start asking questions and then we start asking questions and then we start asking more questions and we're like, wow, there's a whole story here, mm -hmm. and a whole opportunity that we didn't, we didn't really dive into in, in the initial uh, conversation which is why it's important for us to have a consult before we take on our clients because we are selective in, in who we bring on. Uh, but it's also understanding the, the nuances of your business, right? I mean, you know your business better than we do. We're just gonna help you uncover the opportunities to minimize your exposure and help you develop that mindset that helps you maximize that. Yeah, absolutely. We have, I mean, every client has seemed, seemingly, especially this year, has seemingly been from all over the place. <laughs> and. Uh, and so then we have to become familiar with, oh, what's involved in this industry? I'm, okay, I wasn't, really, I wasn't really aware of all these expenses, but you start following the paper trail of everything that this person had to spend on this activity that became a money-generating money, make, money generating activity, mm -hmm. was not their primary business. And then you educate them and yourself on what could potentially be a business expense. They didn't see it that way. And before you know it, you racked up ten, twenty thousand $20,000 in expenses that they weren't reporting. Um, and it, I mean, that's, there are, there are absolutely examples of that 10, yes. 20, 40, $50,000 of things that they thought, well, I was just, I was fixing my house. Like, no, but that's your studio. That's not the same thing. It's a right. business expense. Wow. I, I had uh, painter's block, writer's block 
creative block and I decided to spruce up my, my room to kind of help the flow, the energy, what have you. Well, that's, that's, that's an expense, right? It's helping you with your creative process. That's helping your flow. That's helping you unlock that blocked, you know, chakra synergy that you've got going through your body to help you create. Yeah. Yeah. Your end, whatever your end product is, it has to arrive through some methodology. We're just trying to help you figure out what that methodology is. I imagine there's a few minds blown right now listening to this. Uh, so I think the best thing that we can do from here is to let people know how they can work with you and, and perhaps tell our audience a little bit about your services that you offer. Yeah. Um, you can find us on, on the web and on social media. So, I mean, very simple actualmoney.com with a K or at actual money uh, on Instagram, actual money on Facebook. We're very no frills. Send us a message, tell us your problem. We'll give you a free consultation. And that is big because that's where we tease apart everyone, you, everything you do, what's involved and what we can do for each other. And usually the conversation is much like this. People didn't realize that so much went into everything they created. Amazing. Gil, anything, any final thoughts to uh, perhaps a piece of advice that you could pass on to our audience? Now that you guys have engaged in this next step, realize that you have people that saying my people will talk to your people. Well, you have people now. So utilize, you know, utilize those that are around you, surround yourself with experts and uh, you're going to do great and big things moving forward. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me tack okay. onto that. The, um, uh, the other partner that's not here is uh, Ines Swen and her and I met years and years ago and eventually resulted in this business. She's an international art consultant. She has a long history in the industry. We have a CPA partner uh, that, is our, <laughs> that is our knowledge base for all things federal, state, legal related to, to tax preparation and everything associated with that. So Gilbert is absolutely right when he says that you have people. You, when you use our service, we're at your beck and call. You call us up, send us a message, text us. We'll answer it for you. Or we'll find somebody who knows the answer. Amazing. It sounds like a dream team. Uh, folks, we love this idea of, you know, thinking like a CEO, thinking like an entrepreneur, thinking like a business owner. Uh, and this has been the Smart Art Business Podcast. Do go check out Actual Money. You, the links will be in the show notes. And if you feel inclined, do hit that subscribe button and obviously leave us a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys.